You're listening to the Straits of Video Podcast with Rob Lane. What is up and welcome to a brand new episode of my show Straight to Video. I hope you're all doing awesome and thank you so much for listening. Today I chat with one of the greatest hard rock singers of the past few decades. Milenko Matijevic of Steelheart undoubtedly has some of the most impressive vocal chops of any frontman and whilst it's been over 30 years since the Steelheart debut album featuring tracks such as She's Gone, Everybody Loves Eileen and the MTV hit Angel Eyes I'll Never Let You Go, his vocals are still on point and can be heard on his new track Trust in Love and its accompanying cinematic style video. The song itself has been sung in numerous languages and Milenko hopes this tune can bring a positive positive message to everyone who listens. During our chat we learn all about the background of this new song, we speak about his early days moving from Croatia to the USA, his love of New York growing up, his early bands and also his involvement in the movie Rockstar which he was the vocalist on the recordings for the band Steel Dragon, contributing the Steelheart song We All Die Young to the film's soundtrack and also some talk of some Steel Dragon shows in the very near future. For anyone who loves reaction videos on YouTube, then I urge you to check out some of the endless videos with insane amounts of views of people reacting to early steel art songs and Milenko's incredible vocals. It's so cool to see people hearing this classic stuff for the first time and really having their minds blown by his singing. Before we get to this fun chat though, please show some support and love for our friends Dead Skull Coffee and their great rock and roll infused ground or full bean coffee. Dead Skull Coffee continue to grow from strength to strength and can be seen at numerous festivals this summer. But for you, the listener of this podcast, you can grab 15% off any order through their website, deadskullcoffee.co.uk. Just simply add the discount code STV on checkout and that money off is all yours. Also, the Straight to Video podcast has its own Patreon page, which you can help support this show. Just head on over to patreon.com forward slash STV pod, where for a small monthly donation starting at as little as £2.50 a month you can grab a bonus movie podcast early heads up on guests a private facebook group and some exclusive merch not available anywhere else also i've been teasing a little about a project i have in the works which is going to be massive i hope for straight to video and that's coming this summer so if you're on the patreon you'll get all the early scoop and information on that so please patreon.com forward slash stv pod for all you need to know All right, after our chat, please check out the new song Trust in Love from Steelheart and Milenko Matijevic over at steelheart.com and be sure to subscribe to Steelheart TV on YouTube as there's lots of cool content to be found there. But right now, please enjoy my straight-to-video chat with the fantastic Milenko Matijevic. a lot sunnier there than it is here i know i may actually have to put the glasses on to make me cool look at that (laughs) now i'm cool awesome how are you good morning yeah good morning it's uh, what time is it it's 7 p.m here in the uk in the uk well lovely uk i love uk so i miss it i'm just outside of nottingham which i know you're familiar with nottingham yes i am i actually you know years ago i went over to uh tony iomi's house He's in Nottingham, isn't he? I'm not sure, actually. I mean, Black Sabbath or Birmingham. Birmingham, yeah, yeah. I got that mixed up. Oh, you can't tease me with a Tony Iommi story straight off and just leave it there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was when I was working on the weight record and uh, with Kit Wolven, my dear friend and producer. And he's like, hey, you know, uh, you know, Sabbath is looking for a new singer. Let's go, you know, let's go down, see if you can write some songs or something. And I'm like, great. I wrote this great song on the train coming down. Then I walk in the room, it was me, Tony. Don Airy, drummer, Judas Priest, I forgot his name. And then we just hung out and started working a little bit. We started working on this tune that I wrote. Man, it was fucking awesome. 
you know, what came out. And when Tony came in with the guitar, it was just like, all right, there it is. Let's go. That's it. <laughs> Let's go, man. You know, the new thing. But um, they changed gears and they went working on, you know, just doing the shows, like two hours of just Sabbath. So I thought we were going to put something new together, you know, which I am always excited about writing something new with amazing artists. I would imagine that's something that happened. I mean, I've been playing in bands for about 20 years, obviously not on the level that you guys have, but it's something that seems to happen a lot. Things kind of get teased and initially you can get really excited about it, but then it all falls through. You must have come across things like that, promised tours or projects. How do you deal with that? Do you become immune to it? Like I always say, like when you put your foot on that stage, that's when it's happening. Until then, anything could happen. Yeah. What I don't like is for anyone to waste my time. I really disrespect that. It's all about integrity. And no matter when you're working on stuff, and if you are putting people together, of course, you got to feel them out. They got to feel you out. And it just has to naturally come together. You know, you can't take that as a negative. So you got to go through the process. It's just that if the process is honest, if it's not on, if it's just a bunch of bullshit and I'm sitting there singing and doing stuff and coming up with great stuff. And it's like, oh, no, no, we actually weren't really serious. Oh, that's not cool. You know, that's not the cool stuff. As you know, I did The Doors for a while. I was a front man for it. And I wrote some great songs with Robbie, which one of them I just gave for a movie coming out next year. Super. Which I will be in as well. We'll see how I act. You got this. You got this, sir. You got this. See what I got. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. I want to dive into some fun early steel art memories with you, if that's cool. But first, right now, you're in the midst of the release of certainly one of the most ambitious and creative song and video projects I've seen for a while with your new track, Trust in Love. Ambitious is the word isn't it <laughs> been in the making for a couple of years but i guess with like recent world events i would imagine it's taken on something of a life of its own and just creating its own path it is you know like anything if a tree falls in a forest no one knows about it right so we are working really hard to get it out there to the people get it out there to be heard we originally when we released it in korea first just give you a little backstory i sang the song in 10 languages I did that because I wanted to just kind of show the respect or the feel of the energy of different countries. So they can, how would I say, there's no excuse of hearing what I'm trying to say. And the press in Korea has been outstanding. I mean, absolutely amazing. I do a lot of work in Korea and She's Gone is one of the most famous songs ever. Is it like the most popular karaoke song or something of all time? It's still the number one karaoke song. And they say if the male can sing it in the room with the girls... He's getting lucky. He's in. <laughs> He's in. <laughs> so I originally wrote the song for the unification of the Korean Peninsula. I just feel, you know, it was always this trafficking, always this threat from the other side, always this tension of uncertainty and pain. And it's just unnecessary. I wrote this song and it just kind of grew and grew and became bigger and bigger. And it was just like, this is more than just one song for one country. I think it's for the world. And that's when I started singing in different languages. And it has taken a, a life of its own. This is definitely an anthem song. And it's time to find peace in ourselves, respect for each other. And I feel the understanding will follow. So that is what the song is. And it really is now of what's going on. And I started this in two years ago. I had 350 of my fans send in their vocals for the chorus. And they're all on there good or bad. And I'm telling you, some of them weren't that good, but it doesn't matter. It was the beauty of their energy and came out amazing. Not just the song, though, this incredibly cinematic video as well. Yeah, I just, you know, I want to make movies, you know, I want to make mini movies. That's what this is. It's a mini movie. It tells a story, especially the beginning, what I'm saying. And that bell, just so you know, is here in San Pedro, California. And it's a very sacred bell. It's a bell where the unification came. the United States and Korea came together and 12 other countries joined together in peace. And that bell represents that. It is 18,000 tons and it's bronze. So you can only imagine what that must cost to create. And not everyone is allowed to strike that bell. You can't just go up there and strike that. It's a beautiful, sacred space, you know. And I was honored that the Korean culture that I connected with here, that was the director of Korean culture. So he and I, uh, I created this scene. I said, hey, we're going to do this. I'm going to narrate this. We're going to hit this bell together, you know, for peace. Let it ring throughout the world. And I thought it came out great. 
I like it. <laughs> Already it's an amazing accomplishment what you've done and put together. So just to know that it's growing organically as well from that as well, that's great. Man. It's going to be exciting to see what it can create. Yeah, see what happens. Yeah, it just needs to be heard. So things like this is very important. Share the love. And one of the languages you perform the new song in is in your native Croatian. Yep, I did it in Croatian. I did it in Chinese. I did it Japanese. I did it Russian. I did do it in Russian. They're going to need it. They're actually going to need it. So I had somebody start translating the Ukrainian. So we'll see. I just don't want to feel like I'm jumping on a wagon. You know what I'm saying? I did this two years ago. So it's not like I started this yesterday. Doing it in Croatian, we moved from to the USA when you were just six years old. I was just wondering if you remember why your family made that move. Was it just for a better life for the family? Yeah, my dad, you know, he was just one of those. My father had a lot of balls, you know, but he was a little out there. But uh, he just wanted a better life than being in Croatia. And he's he's just like, I'm going here. I'm going to do it and I'm going to make it happen. He made it happen. I have to give it to him. Came to the United States, worked hard, brought me and my brother here and brought the family here. We moved to New York first and then we went to Connecticut, moved to Greenwich, Connecticut. So we lived there for about, I want to say five years, maybe less. I don't even, I don't even remember. I can't remember the timeline. But then we moved back to Croatia. He moved the whole thing. He packed the whole thing. I mean, like insane. So you're just getting settled in this country, which you'd seen in movies, getting in the flow of the 70s. And oh, we're going back. Yeah, we're going back. So we go back. And then all of a sudden, maybe a year he's like, nah, I don't like it. We're going back to the United States. So we went back to the United States. Then we moved back there again. And we lived, I don't know how long, but we did it again. Oh, shit. He did it twice. Where was your headspace as a kid? Like, come on, Dad. Very confused. And what's even funnier is that we had this Zenith TV, you know, this like really cool TV. If you saw, you'd like, you'd remember it. And he packs that too. Of course, it's not going to work in Croatia. I'm taking the good stuff back, kids. We'll be fine. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Do you have any specific memories of like New York and stuff in the 70s? I loved, loved the United States in the 70s and the 80s too. I mean, I love it now. But then it was a different type of magic in the air. There was that freedom. Even as a kid, I could feel it. It was just different. I would go to sleep to the radio every night, listening to the songs, listening to Elton John or Led Zeppelin. It was magic. It was like when you walk into Madison Square Garden or Wembley, when you walk in these historical, amazing venues, as soon as you walk in, there's an energy in the air. You know what I mean? It's just like, ooh. Okay. Something else in the air in the 70s as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, a lot. Of, I was too young for all of that, but you know. What was your first experience in Madison Square Garden? Do you remember? Foreigner. Right, nice. Yeah, that was Foreigner. I'll never forget it. Yeah, we took the train in. Forgot how old I was. 14, 15. You and your brother or you and some friends? Uh, just me and some friends. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, I still remember that. Was you big into music at that point? I was shot. Since I was three years old, I was lost in music, man. Three years old, I was standing on top of a chair, singing in my grandmother's kitchen, screaming to the radio like I was on stage. And I swallowed a piece of gum. I'll never forget it. I thought I was going to die. I had this little pain in the right side of my heart. Right after I swallowed, I was like, I'm going to die. Long story short, I would still get this pain a little bit in the right side. I'm like, it was almost like a memory of really weird, you know? But I've been singing since three years old. When we came to America, I was five, six, we started doing like country music, Johnny Cash, and which was wonderful. But then my friend, my Italian friend, who's a drummer, he shows up and he goes, Emil. Yeah, listen to this. Listen to this. Come on, listen to this. Listen, listen, listen to this. Listen to this singer. And he played me Robert Plant, played me Zeppelin, Black Dog. And I was like, really? I was done. Game over. <laughs> I'm done. I know what I need to do, who I am, what I got to do. When did you get your, first, your own copy of a Led Zeppelin album? I don't know. Actually, I wasn't even allowed to play that music in the house because when I you know, switched over to that, my father was so crazy that he was so angry at me because he thought, now I'm going to do rock and roll. I'm going to do drugs. I'm going to drink. I'm going to be a loser. And I tried growing my hair a little bit, you know, fall in a little bit. He would pay the barber. He'd pay him an extra 10. He goes, make sure you cut that hair short. Oh, no. It's the worst. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was the worst. It was the worst. It was awful. So, you know, I got my ass kicked growing up. It was tough. It was a lot of work, man. Was your brother into rock and roll as well? He was. He was great. He was an amazing guitar player. Yeah. We had a great band. It was called Teaser. Was that your first band which you put together? Yeah. We did Led Zeppelin. We did, I mean, a lot of great songs. We sounded fucking great. I still have tapes. I bet you had a great logo for a band name called Teaser. It had to be a great logo. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, it was kind of corny, actually. You know, we had this rhythm guitar player who was, a, he was also an Italian gent, but he was very romantic kind of guy. He was always suave. He was a little older than us. And he came up with the logo. It was a rose. Get the gals in. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, it is what it is. Where did you used to rehearse at? Was it like a garage band? No, we first started rehearsing in the basement of Paco's house. His name was Paco Michalitzi. And we rehearsed downstairs. And I'll never forget, you know, we would have this Ampeg head. My old man was always like, make sure you get four inputs. We got the microphone in there. We got the guitars in there. We got bass in there, you know, out of this one Ampeg. It's melting. Oh, that sounded brutal, but that's what it was, you know. And then we uh, moved to uh, a place called Our House, where it was for like Alcohol Anonymous and kids who needed, you know, it was like a, what would you call that? A safe house or something. And they gave us a room upstairs and said, yeah, you guys could rehearse every, I don't know, Tuesday and Thursday or something like that. And we were there for a long time. Do you do like high school shows or anything like that? Oh yeah. Yeah. We did do the high school shows. Yeah. We got that. I mean, it was funny, man. I still have pictures. We jumped on stage and we looked like rock stars. We were looking at silk shirt stuff. I mean, we were, we were in it, you know? <laughs> Amazing. You hit the ground running then with the very first band. Always, always, you know, always worked really hard. I mean, really music was always my life. Every day I wake, literally since I can remember, you know, it was never anything else. I tried all this stuff just to survive. And I was like, fuck that. It's not who I am. It's great that you know that in your heart. That's whatever you got to do. That's the path you got to go down. It's still not easy though. You know, everyone thinks it's like they see stardom, things happen. It's like, no one has any idea what it takes to do this. Like this song, Trust and Love. The amount of hours and focus, engineering and singing and producing, and I directed it, the video as well. And I paid for it. This was my gift to the world. I mean, if you look at that production, that wasn't cheap. No, that's what I mean. That's a pretty epic scale video, man. Yeah, no one does that anymore. No one does that anymore. So I was like, you know what? Let's do this. And this is my gift to the world to wake up. My little message, you know, my little spark in the world. And I, I really hope it catches on. I really do because it's, it's honest. It's not bullshit. It's not like pretentious. I didn't write it or do it to be like the guy. I wrote it to send a message more of an awareness thing. And what I was saying, the amount of work it takes, I don't think anybody realizes. And the fans don't realize. Do you? I almost kind of want to record myself every day in a studio and let them see really what it takes to record a song or to be an artist today. An artist today is ludicrous. You really have to be so passionate and your fire and your heart has to be so strong because the amount of work it takes to be an artist today is mind-blowing. And all the labels, you know, they're looking at your Instagram numbers. There's not even a lot of artists that are massive, but all the other artists, it takes, you got to be social media person. You got to be a PR person. You got to be a producer. You got to be a director. You got to be a engineer and you better sing or perform well too. By the time you finish a track, you're burnt. Speaking of like the epic scale of the new video, did you always used to enjoy doing videos back in the day, like on the first two Steel Art albums? Yeah, absolutely. They're always fun to do. I love movies. You know, I really love movies. Grew up every Saturday and Sunday. I'd be most likely in my room watching movies. Crazy. You know, especially Sundays. I go get a large pie. And I just eat this pizza all day just and watching these crazy movies. What's your go-tos? Did you have go-tos growing up? Always Dracula and horror stuff. I always love that. Vampires and all that shit. <laughs> right now, I re-recorded, just so you know, so the Steelheart 30th album. So Trust and Love is going to be on the 30th album. I'm a little behind. I was supposed to finish it last year. There were just not enough hours in a day. Simple as that. Pushing along right now. And I re-recorded She's Gone. And I re-recorded with a piano vocals and a 40 piece orchestra and it's dracula i mean it's legit wait till you hear this it is dark it is beautiful it's a re-record so i rechanged it there's still a lot of singing but there's no screaming it doesn't call for it it sounds stupid doing it i also did mama don't you cry i re-recorded that also with a 40 piece orchestra and we did everybody loves eileen we remixed we all die young the original version and what other songs that i do Oh, Angel Eyes, I'll Never Let You Go, as a duet. All the smashes, sir, they're on there. Yeah, so 
I hope they like it. Speaking about the vocal approach you've done on the new recordings, how was it for you back in the day? Did you get known as this band with this singer with this like insanely high voice? I mean, a lot of great singers came from that era, but your voice was just next level to this day. Did the band get a reputation for like, you got to hear this guy sing? Yes, we did. It was actually, it became uh, kind of a joke because first of all, Every night, like when we did a tour with Great White, this one tour we do, and we're doing this big tour. And every single night, the band's out on the balcony or wherever their side stage, you're like, let's see if he's going to do it. Can he do it? He's like, Fucking damn, he did it again. <laughs> you know? I can't believe it. He did it. There's stories of people going to the bathroom and have bets. They would take bets. Have you always like been really disciplined person when it comes to singing? Because you've like constantly maintained your vocal chops. It's still up there. It's so important. It's a gift. And if you disrespect the gift, they'll take it away from you. Period. I can't smoke. I love a cigar once in a while. I love a good cigar and a scotch, you know, but I can do that in moderation. You got to work out. You got to be lean. You got to be, it's a fucking lot of work (laughs) to be a a singer. And all you singers out there, you know what I'm talking about. It's a focus, man. It really is. There's a surprising amount of vocal reaction videos to your performances on YouTube. Have you watched many of them? I have watched a couple. What was that? There was one girl, one lady. She's a vocal teacher. Yeah, there's like actual vocal coaches commenting on it. Yeah. And they're like, did you hear that? (laughs) It's great because if you know the song and you know they've not seen it, you're just waiting for that moment where you punch that button just to see what their reaction is. And it's awesome to see. Someone in another interview with you asked about some of your favorite memories of those early days in the 80s and early 90s. And you immediately fired back with no hesitation. You said happiness, freedom and fun. Everyone was so alive back then. How do you explain that to someone who says, oh, you're just looking at it through rose-tinted glasses? Because there was like some real carefree magic during those times, hence reflected in the music bands like yourself created. What do you think it was that gives that such positivity? You know, it was a different, just different times, different ways of thinking, different energy. People thought differently. Yeah, I mean, we lived a you know beautiful time. I mean, that that was sacred. And the '80s was just that was just mayhem, you know, just off the hook. When Sunset Strip, it would take you literally, let's say, from La Brea to the Rainbow, which I think is about a mile and a half. It would take you probably two hours to get there because that was the vibe, you know, people get in the car and they drive. But that was the whole part of it, you know what I mean? Driving to the Rainbow and you know, party. How was that for you coming from the East Coast and landing in that, like the turn of the decade? Was you like, holy shit, what have we been messing about out on the East Coast for? (laughs) I mean, it it was a lot of flash here. And then when you see the chrome wheels on cars, it's like, wow. When I first came here, it was, um, yeah, it was just fun. I mean, it was fun. It was fun making records. It was times of when you get signed to a label, that's it. They're committing to you. That means they're going to put money into you. They're going to do something with you. And it's just one of those things where the PR and everybody knows, okay, Universal just signed this band, MCA. We signed this band. Okay, they're going to do this, this, and this. Absolutely. Okay, let's start. You know, and there's your shot. You got a shot. You can just focus on being the best you can at singing and performing. Whereas now, like I say, you got to do everything. I couldn't tell you how beautiful that was. I would wake up, have a cup of coffee. I go by my piano and I'm writing, you know, just sing or get the acoustic guitar. And that's it. My manager called me, hey, you guys come in on Wednesday. Okay, I'll see you going to rehearsal. That was it. Every day. That's the gift when you would get to that point, though. However, before that, you know, everyone's got jobs and still, you know, it's not peachy cream either. You know what I mean? But it was that. And now I have Steelheart Records. And at this point, it's a real label. I mean, I got everything in place and we're promoting me, Steelheart, you know, and uh, we see how we do. Then maybe the future can be someone else. I don't know. On the flip side, I always say people say, oh, it's so much harder now. But I think it's great now that you do have so much control. The future is in your hands if you are willing to put the work there. There is. But let me explain to you something, <laughs> okay, which people don't understand. <laughs> Lay it on me. Okay. I may be working at 7-Eleven when I'm done with all of this, all right? Because I don't think anyone understands what this costs, okay? Because when you're doing videos, you're doing recording songs, the mixing side of it, the recording of it. That's just one part of it. The biggest part is the promotion of it. And that isn't cheap. You know, the good thing you got now is that you can get out there, okay, to different avenues where in the past it was like, you got to get into the magazines, you got to get in certain times, which I love, by the way, get a magazine. You know what I mean? 
It was cool. Now it's all on the internet and social media. See, what I'd like to do is bring back the old, but be new. The artist doesn't have freaking time to be sitting there on social media every second. What do I say? What do I do? Oh, I'm here now. It's like, no, it doesn't work. You need someone to run that space. And that costs money. To get it to the top of the pile in front of people's eyes as well. That's the hard part. Strategy, the vibe, the energy, who are you, all that. Then you have the PR. That's a whole nother thing. And then, you know, well, you got to make a record. Then now you're an artist and you're starting out. It's like, well, you got to make a record. How are you going to make it? How are you going to pay? Do you have a studio? No. Well, you better know how to engineer. Fuck me, man. The artist today, I really, my heart goes out to the true artists which is really difficult because there's so many people in the way of the true artists. I'm a writer. I'm a singer. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. But you got these other guys or girls that are really savvy in the social media and this and that. But they're all over the place and they're in the way. 70,000 songs get uploaded to Spotify a day. Let's think about that. A day. A day. <laughs> it's pretty intimidating when you put it that way. In 1996, you wrote and recorded the song We All Die Young for the Steel Art album Wait, which would, as we know, later be picked up as one of the signature songs for the 2001 movie Rockstar. Do you know what put that song out for consideration? Because obviously it had been around for a couple of years. Well, yeah, we were at rehearsal. So we're rehearsing, me, Zach Wilde, Jason Bonham, Jeff Pilsen. And the uh, music supervisor came in and she goes, uh, you know, if you got any songs, please submit some songs. So I submitted the Wait album. And she came in the morning. She goes, it's that song. We want that song. We got to have that song. What had you guys in the rehearsal room in the first place? Steel Dragon. We were rehearsing for recording the album for the movie. Right. Okay. How did you get involved in that initially? Tom Worman called me. I was actually in Connecticut and I was going to uh, back to LA the next day. And I was like, you know, I got to put a new band together. I got to, I got to get my shit together. Just so happens he calls me that night. And he goes, hey, so I'm doing this project and it's pretty big and we need a singer we need like a really good singer for the character and uh would you be interested in auditioning he goes i think you could be the guy and it's a pretty big deal i was like sure i'll come in i fly in at 11 30 i'll be at the studio at two came in at two sang my ass off the three they're like done you're in <laughs> it was that fast so they had some songs we had stand up we had uh, living the life we had wasted generation those are the songs I kind of learned on the spot and sang. And then they asked me, do you have any other songs that you may have? And then I presented the weight record and they heard We All Die Young. And it was just like, wow, that was perfect. So that was a big deal. And there's a lot of spinning around with the Steel Dragon, by the way. So I'm doing a cancer benefit. At Crew Fest, right? That's right. So we're going to do that. And there's a lot more bigger stuff happening too, which I can't talk about just yet. But in May, I can. But we just don't know who's going to be on that stage. Let's just say that. It's got to have your voice there. <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely. I'm definitely doing it. Yeah. That's a given. Oh, that's got to be very exciting because it's the perfect fit for the film. Everyone knows that song. Right. How did you feel about seeing the movie when you saw the finished cut? Was you like, damn, I should be up there behind that mic? Yeah, it was painful. Yeah? It was painful because I couldn't talk about it. Right. I mean, I couldn't say what the worst was when I was at the forum. And you got, I don't know, 18,000 people losing their mind. And I'm in the fourth row there sitting there. I'm just sitting there like this, listening. And I'm watching as I'm going, this hurts. As Mark's going, and we all die young. Crowd's like losing. I'm like, ah. <laughs> okay, it is what it is. That was my part. That was what I was supposed to do. Bittersweet in a way. You know, that was the whole thing. Mark did a great job, you know. It's a fun film, man. It's a fun film. It was great just to hear that song blasting out. It's yeah. awesome. And kind of just in closing, um, we mentioned it a little bit earlier, but a lot of classic hard rock albums from 1990, 91 and 92 have not been able to fully celebrate their 30th anniversaries. What plans do you have for Steelheart now? We're getting back to some normality. You mentioned like re-recording some songs and will it come out as a physical box set or I think you've done a live stream gig. Anything what actually is in the works to celebrate it? Well, what we're going to do, well, those songs that I just told you that, that we re-recorded, it's a big deal. Trust me. 40 piece orchestra is something special. When you hear it, it's just, it's real. I'm still old school. I like to record, you know, real strings and stuff. Anyway, um, we have the, all those songs. We All Die Young is uh, remixed. And I'm actually talking to a couple of people to do a guitar solo on it. Somebody really famous. We'll see how that comes together. So it'll be a full album, 10 songs. 
And then from there, we have four concerts, one that we already started working on, which we did in Korea in 2019. Big concert, 30,000 people, beautifully filmed. And that's going to go on to Steelheart TV, which I built. Do you still have loads of old footage from back in the day as well? We have 50 videos up on Steelheart TV already. All backstage, weird stage. I mean, there's so much content that, like I said, it's just not enough hours in a day to get all this going. Like right now, I really want to just shut it down and disappear, but I can't. I got too much going on. It's endless. Yeah. I said, just not enough hours just to get it all out. It, it's quite exciting. Like I want to get all this stuff out to people because people want to take it on board, but it's just finding right, the time right. to devote to it. But it's great. You're so creative and want to get it out there. I think it's awesome. And I'm excited to see how the... Trust in Love goes down. Obviously, you mentioned the Steel Dragon stuff, Steel Heart 30th Anniversary, lots of things happening, man. So it's a good place to be in. Just got to navigate those yeah. waters and, and spin all those plates. Oh, movies. Don't forget the movies. That one movie I got to do. Hey, I'm counting my blessings. To be able to do this and to be able to be in it, it's a gift. So put an H on and handle That's it, it kind of awesome. thing. Awesome. Thank you ever so much for taking some time. I know you're super busy, so I won't keep you any longer, but I appreciate you sharing some stories and it's great to see things going so well. Thank you, brother. Take care. Thank you so much to Milenko Matievich of Steelheart for a great chat here on the Straight to Video podcast. I'm excited to see and hear what the future holds as he's evidently still at the top of his game and the promise of new Steelheart and also some Steel Dragon projects in the future is pretty exciting. To find out everything you need to know, please check out steelheart.com the YouTube channel and sign up for the mailing list. This podcast is dropping new episodes every Tuesday and Friday as we cruise towards 200 episodes of the show. You can find them all at stvpod.com or wherever you listen to podcasts, but please be sure to like, follow and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. That is all for today's show. I want to thank you all for listening and to everyone that keeps coming back. It really means a lot and I appreciate it so much. So until we chat again, take care and let's speak again real soon.